Hello everyone and welcome to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. I'm Callie and today we are taking a look at the Whatnot Cabinet by Pencil First Games. In the Whatnot Cabinet, you and your fellow players are exploring the world, collecting curiosities, and putting them into your cabinet, hoping to have the highest scoring collection at the end of the game. The game plays one to four players, takes about 20 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. So today we'll take a look at everything you get in the game, a little bit of how to play, and our brief review of the game. Let's get started. To start the game setup, each player will take a cabinet and a pawn of the same color. And if you're playing a solo or two player game, you'll take two of those pawns. You'll place the journey board in the center of the play area and the starting player will place their pawn in the first space, the next player in the second, and so on. And if you're playing the two player, the first player will place their pawn in the first area, the second player in the second and third area, and then the first player back again in the fourth area. Place all of the curio tiles into the bag. There is an option if you're playing two player to take out the tiles with the little marker on the back. Shuffle the curiosity cards and lay out five of those to become the objectives for this game. In addition, you'll take one of the wonder cards and place that out as an additional objective that anyone can achieve. Place the rest of those cards back in the box. Put all of the wonder points in the middle area accessible to all players as you'll be using them throughout the game. The Whatnot Cabinet is played over a series of rounds in which players are collecting two of the curio tiles each round. To start off a round, you'll dig into the curio bag, pull out four random tiles, lay them face up to become the outdoor area. This is primarily where players will be choosing tiles from. Then the first player, whoever's pawn color is in the first spot on the board, will take their pawn and select one of the five available options. They'll place their pawn there and do that action. So it could be just drawing three random tiles from the bag, discarding one and placing two, or as extreme as completely getting rid of all of the outdoor tiles, putting four new outdoor tiles and choosing two of those to place in the cabinet. To place in the cabinet, You'll just select where you want that tile to go. As long as there isn't another tile there already, you can place there. In addition, if when you place, you have fulfilled a row or a column, you will score that row or column at the end of your turn, adding up the, placing the point value that you get at the edge of that row and column. Players continue taking turns only now they have less options for the available actions as each action can only be taken once. After every player has taken their turn, you'll shift all of the pawns up in spaces and that will be the new order for the next round. You'll continue with a new round by cleaning up the outdoor area, putting out four new outdoor tiles and beginning again with the first player. The round continues until players have all filled up their curio cabinet and then scoring will begin. You'll tally up all of the scores across your rows and columns as well as any of the cards that you may have collected throughout the game as you accomplished those objectives and everyone will try to score what they can for the wonder card. In addition to any tiles that may have had points on them from crowns or from action tiles. The highest score wins. Let's bring a Michael on board to see what we think about the whatnot cabinet. Welcome Michael. First off, let's talk about the components and the artwork and the general presentation of the game. Okay. So I love the theme. Obviously I'm a big fan of, of collecting and creating collections. <laughs> Very similar in theme to what I created with Moonshell in some of the ways there. And the artwork by Beth Sorbel is beautiful. I love the watercolor art style and just the, the whimsical nature of it, I think, is a key point in the theme that is a lot of fun and very attractive to a wide audience. So, yeah, the, the components of the art and all that. This, this is a game where you're gathering stuff from the outside and putting them into your cabinet, and it's full of whatnots. It's full of animals and 
other little different types of tokens and tiles. Little stones, little leaves, little rocks, little figurines and animals. Artwork yeah. looks good. Um, it gives you this cabinet here, which is kind of hard to tell that it's a cabinet if I'm being honest. I think you could place a place like this. So this is the rug down here and up above is the cabinet. So oh, we totally played it upside down when we first played it. See, so they, that's what, yeah. <laughs> but I, I kind of gathered that after looking at it here, but it's like kind of like a cabinet. I kind of would liked it if it was just a little bit more uh, decor, maybe even more rustic. And it's kind of like more a, like a wooden cabinet. Because that's like, what I think of when I think of a whatnot cabinet. It's one of something that my grandmother like, has. Yeah. She has her different mm -hmm. types of like music boxes and that kind of thing in it. And this is her kind of a little figurine that, yeah. Uh -huh. It's a little more modernized, but it gets the job done. Um, this little board here is nice as well. It gives you the different actions and they're uh, readily and easily available to understand how they work and the order in which they work. Uh, the best part about the game as far as component quality goes is yes, these guys here, uh -huh. high they're quality. Wooden. I like that they're wooden. That feels good. It always feels better than plastic to me. So that's nice as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the different objective cards are nice as well. You'll understand what they do as you play the game. You'll probably need one time to play the game to understand how these work. You'll be gathering them once you complete them, except for this guy here. This one will score at the end of the game. Um, and then of course you have your points, which you'll be taking and gathering as you score them. And uh, that's a nice little touch as well to the game um, because you will need them as opposed to counting them all up, which is a, a little bit of a contrast to Moonshell, which you would need to have a pen or a paper. Adding some tokens is, is kind of nice, especially because you'll need some when you score zero points as well. Games put together really well. Um, I like that there's a lot of use of symbols for the different actions. So, okay, I know that symbol is always this. I doesn't require too much reading, yet there's still like on the objective cards some description of what you're actually going after so you can kind of uh, remember if you don't recognize the symbol right away. But I think it could have used a little more art, a little more uh, detail as far as that goes. Most as of its far symbols. As like going into the outdoors and exploring that part. Even even an extra like board where you can gather the tiles from, yeah. or even extending this board here so you can place the tiles down yeah, onto it. Yeah, instead of just having the tile kind of floating on your just game so, table. just somewhere. Yeah, we want to make this board a little bigger, have like yeah, an outside Yeah, you can't area. even really see the artwork on the outdoors because you're covering it with the ponds. It's so, very small. But yes, in general, I do like the game. Yeah. I I think it's beautiful <laughs> and uh, this this box art is really great as well it does a great job of explaining kind of like what you're expecting to to be doing in the game um, minus the cabinet there's no cabinet involved so you have to kind of look at the back here which is my opinion is even done even better um, and of course the quality of all the components is nice even the bag is, is really nice as well yeah, nice thick yeah, canvas actually. bag so yes yeah, solid solid job there <laughs> What other, what other thing you want to talk about? All right, uh, gameplay. So how easy it is, is it to learn? How strategic? Um, did we enjoy it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this game's uh, gameplay is very straightforward. There's the five different actions you can take, but you can't take them all on your turn. You have to choose one or two, depending on if you're playing one or two players, or uh, two or more players. Yeah. In a two-player game, you can select two different spaces, and you'll take them in order. Uh, some abilities are just much better than others, and there's very few times where you'll want to use certain abilities based on what's available to you. And you can tell that's the order that then, if you take the better ability, you're going to be going last the next round. So that's the trade-off. It just, in the moment, it feels like you always want to go after the better <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, there's sometimes where you want nothing on the field, in which That's case true. you might want to go ahead and uh, take just, two from the bag and place. Drop three from the but bag. it's dangerous yeah. because mm -hmm. you could get nothing that you want, whereas what's on the field could be beneficial. So, yeah, it has that give and take, push your luck kind of a feel to the mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm regulated by choice in this game, and because it's a puzzle game, I want to have as much choice as possible. So, that would be my only negative as far as that goes. I would have liked to have had a little bit more. Uh, for a free will in the game. I don't know what you want yeah, to call it. Because you do have a lot of like options to pick from. When we were playing two player especially, it felt like sometimes there were multiple times where there, there just wasn't what I wanted to take on the board, on the field <laughs> at all. And it doesn't feel good to not be able to get your objectives. Um, mm -hmm. And you have to be aware that like placement matters too. Going uh, first oh, in the yeah. second round is important to do so in a two player game specifically. Because if you are too slow to get these objectives, you can't get them. And that's a big difference between uh, some of the other puzzle games we've played. This one here, once you mm -hmm. gather that, nobody else can take it from you. Uh, and what I do really like about the gameplay too, are there are certain uh, tiles in the bag that will pop up and they actually have unique abilities on them. Mm -hmm. And if you do them, you're going to keep, to keep those and they'll score you points at the end of the game, which will solidify you uh, a good chunk of points if you mm -hmm. gather enough of them. Yeah, they're pretty risky though, because 
you had to draw directly from the bag for some of them right after. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's one of those things where you'll take it and then draw a card from the, a tile from the bag and put it on your board, but you do get value from that, which is a really nice mechanic. It's probably one of my favorite yeah. things about the mechanics of the game is uh, how much you can actually push your luck and how mm -hmm. you can gain uh, better and better, uh, higher and higher points, even if you can't score these objectives when you want to, because they're not yeah. a huge amount of points for these guys. So these are only two points, which is yeah, equivalent yeah. of two action tiles. But if you get enough of them or you get the enough action tiles, that definitely does swing uh, the final score. Yeah, so this is a puzzle game in and of itself. It's kind of an abstract puzzle style game with tiles. I'm not a huge puzzle game fan, as many people probably know. Uh, this is a game that uh, I would play again, but probably if asked. I wouldn't go specifically out of my way to play it because I'm just, I just suck at them. One thing I think just added randomness and not necessarily strategy to the game was the use of the crowns on the tiles. Yeah, then they're more valuable tiles to go after, but it... I don't know. To me, that it wasn't um, if, as if, much of a choice of a trade-off going tile, after the crown versus my objective. If I need that tile and there's a crown on it, it benefits me greatly. More. If I do yeah. not need that and there's a crown on it, it's going to give me one point as opposed like, to maybe I still nothing. I don't really want it, maybe, yeah. Uh -huh. And maybe I'd rather go for the bag. I don't know. Um, so it just felt like if you were lucky and it was one you wanted and it had a it crown, was excellent. it's extra. Great it's extra great. <laughs> so it's kind of like a win more. Instead of a, a trade-off and choice. Yeah. Yeah. But f uh, for those of you who do like puzzle games, though, who do like manipulating your board and controlling a, a space, this is going to be a pretty solid choice for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It plays a little bit like uh -huh. Moonshell. It like, plays like <laughs> Kelly's game as far as placing down pieces on a board and trying to score points based on getting uh, columns uh, and rows of different shapes. But it's, it's a very it's different, different uh, game yeah. feel. Yes, uh -huh. it's a very different style of game um, but it does have a lot of uniqueness to it whereas pulling stuff from a bag placing them onto a board uh, choosing Thinking about your actions the color and type of your tiles and how they could work together that sort of thing which is just a component i think of a spatial puzzle game yeah uh, so but basically for those of you who are puzzle lovers out there probably somebody <laughs> like Callie is going to you're going to enjoy this game you're going to want to play this again this is something that you'll bring out because it's very easy to understand very easy to teach very easy to read the rules and yeah. grasp how to play after the first round or two of the game you've pretty much got it down and uh that being said, the last little thing about what I want to specifically talk about is that there's only like what, three rounds in this game, or or, or well, that's or, so that's two player, right? Because you're doing two pawns at a time, so you're actually collecting four tiles around. So then there's only three rounds, but with more players, it's six. there's more rounds. So, yeah, it's six, yeah rounds. six rounds. The game's very, very fast, it is, especially yeah. in a two-player game. Oh. You're going to be done quick. And usually I kind of like that where you uh, have a, it's speedy, and then you're like, oh, I want to keep playing. But oh, in this then case, you can like learn what you did from the last game and take it into the next game which is great but in this case uh, you know something like mystic veil where the game is over before i want it to be because i'm just starting to get it good and i'm like oh that felt good uh, this one can also have that thing where it's like oh it's over ah, i have no other choices left okay i gotta pick these guys here that can kind of happen with this game or on the off side on the other side it's I got my perfect board. Everything yeah. fit just where I wanted it to, and it feels mm -hmm. really good. It feels really great to get the pieces where I needed them to be. And because I'm like kind of a perfectionist when it comes to placing down pieces, which is also why I suck at puzzle games, and also why I'm not good at puzzle games. But I think the theme kind of lends itself away from that. Yes, you want the highest score, but you don't... Part of the fun of collecting and going out and seeing the world and taking back those things is not to create a perfect cabinet. I want to win. <laughs> it's to enjoy the exploration and the memories and like, oh, I got all these little kitty characters in my cabinet. You know, fun like that. Very cute and joyous. I want to make sure that I get all the points for the spaces I get and I place a piece down and I don't happen to have literally all the colors in the exact order. I'm missing just one. Yeah. Um, but like I said, that's that's going to be one of those things for all puzzle games. So don't mind mm -hmm. me being a miser for this type of a game. It is a really fun game. I really did have a good time with this one and uh, I'm sure I will be playing this again. Yes. And if you like to check out more about the Whatnot Cabinet, maybe pick it up for yourself. There'll be a link down in the description go ahead and do that and of course if you made it this far in the video i hope you'll give us a like and a subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can see when new videos come out they'll come up on your feed more likely 
And oh, check out unfilteredgamer.com uh, for uh, more of our review videos, written reviews, and giveaways. Top games of the year. Oh, oh last thing too, this is, a, this is a pretty big team. We got Steve Finn yeah, on here, the yeah. artist Beth jumping in again, Eduardo, who's also a reviewer. Mm -hmm. so also, he, who also does the uh, videos. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then you have Keith Mateja. Uh, Mateja. I can't say your last name, buddy. I, I'm sorry. Uh, who did, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, what, when you're climbing so the giants. Oh, um, uh, I can't remember the name. I, I love that game, too. Anyway, Josh has it right now. He stole it from me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, Kim Robinson for graphic design. So quite a big team here of uh, known people. These, these guys keep putting out new, uh, more and more yeah. games, which is really nice to see. It gives us, it, us a little bit of hope to be able to produce more games as well. So you guys have to keep it up. Otherwise, it might discourage people <laughs> like me. <laughs> That's pretty much all I got as well. And as always, we look forward to seeing, seeing you guys, guys next time. time.